Coming up, tracking midnight moose poachers in Canada's wilderness. Bonding with a boy, this deaf Dalmatian is a life changer. And this old dog knows how to rock. Charlie, zero 08. Got a call from 143. Has a vehicle stopped on Highway 2, believed to be carrying over limits of fish from Pine House. OK, I'm at the airport now. I can be there in about three minutes. Soro, a five-year-old German shepherd, is on wildlife poacher patrol. His owner, Daryl Minter, is a conservation officer with Saskatchewan Environment. Today, Zorro's work starts with a call to investigate a fishy camper. Poaching is quite a serious problem, especially in this part of Saskatchewan. Uh, along the forest fringe, the wildlife is very vulnerable. There's a lot of access to the wildlife, and that makes them become targets. If no action was taken to enforce the regulations applying to the species, it could lead to a complete elimination of that species. Right now, there is a total ban on moose hunting and strict quotas on elk and certain fish. Zorro's Poacher Patrol works to ensure the survival of the overhunted game and fish. Some hunters and fishermen conceal fish or game over their legal limit. Many of them succeeded in smuggling it undetected. Where is it, buddy? But Zorro sniffs out the truth in a matter of seconds. Oh, that a boy. What you got there, buddy? Contraband fish. For his hard work, Zorro is rewarded with his favorite well-worn chew toy. Good boy. That a boy. That a boy, buddy. Come on, buddy. These fishermen use rods and lures, but poaching hunters use guns, making Zorro's job a dangerous one. When the population of a targeted species declines, they need to be protected. That's why Saskatchewan Environment imposes quota limits and uses dogs like Zorro to enforce them. In most cases, we're utilizing Zorro's nose to find things for us, and he's very good at it. He's had uh, several good finds that wouldn't have been found otherwise without him there. Zorro was bred in the Czech Republic for police work, but he flunked the aggression profile. Daryl heard and wanted to give him another chance. Stop right there, I'm gonna send the dog. Conservation officer, stop or I'm gonna send the dog. Hit! Stay still! Down! Daryl waited six months before beginning serious aggression training. He had matured quite a bit in that time, and that I believe that was all he needed. And I know on command, it's just like a light switch that he can do criminal apprehension like the rest of them. Zorro also excels at sniffing out firearms and at agility. The German Shepherd is an agile, muscular dog with strong shoulders and powerful back legs. That a boy, good boy, good boy. Their exceptional noses, coupled with a desire to please, make them a top choice for law enforcement. They love strenuous activity and crave a good challenge, like this training exercise. What do you got there, buddy? What do you got there? Whenever he can, Daryl takes Zorro out to run hard. He was very trainable and he loves doing the work. And there's nothing as rewarding as when you put that collar on him and, and you just see him full of enthusiasm going to work. He, he listens, he's very responsive to me, and I think he reads me better than I can read him even. I know Zorro's going to be there to help me in the event that I ever need help and he knows that he can trust me to help him whenever he needs help.
Zorro's job is dangerous. These rifles were seized from Saskatchewan poachers. Some can kill from a mile away. The majority of the individuals that we deal with have firearms, and certainly the poachers are going to have multiple firearms. Now, we hope they don't have the intent of trying to injure uh, or kill officers, but we always have to be aware that that's a possibility and take that into consideration in how we operate. Tonight, Daryl is planning a night raid to catch poachers red-handed. It'll be up to Zorro, who failed aggression training, to intimidate them. What's your location tonight? Zorro's partners patrol the area by plane. Poachers stalk moose at night when they come out of the woods to known feeding spots. They use powerful spotlights, which can be seen from a plane. On the ground, Zorro's job is to catch them in the act before too many moose are killed. Daryl kills the headlights and, with help from above, tracks the poachers under cover of darkness. Yeah, I have the visual on the target right now. Uh, they're still southbound on that oil road. They're working the boat like both sides. Transport. These are serious guys that are out there, and they're not going to want to be caught. Okay, we're ready. Let's do it. Here's where we're ready. When you get the call that there is a night hunter working in your area, the adrenaline starts pumping because there's lots of things that can go wrong. Conservation officer, stop or send the dog! One of the poachers escapes into the bush on foot. He had no firearm when he took off there, so. Zorro and Daryl track the fugitive poacher. Keep that dog away from me. Without Zorro, the poachers may never have been caught. Next time, do it your toe. Zorro couldn't save this moose, but by catching the poachers, he's saving others. I am very proud of Zorro and the work he does. It just never fails to amaze me when I put him to work, what he's able to accomplish, and we just wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. He's phenomenal. Two and a half years ago, this deaf and abandoned Dalmatian was picked up and sent to a foster home. There she met J.D. Carnup, a special needs boy. Hello. J.D. is prone to rages. This is the results of one of J.D.'s rages. When J.D. has a rage, J.D. gets very angry, he gets very strong, and he ripped the blinds in half. OK, we need to change. Mama's going to unbutton now. No! Yes. I have to say is a good thing that Susie's deaf because I think the screaming would scare a dog. Susie has a calming effect on JD. It's a full-time job. She doesn't realize he's yelling, so she just moves right on in closer to him. Okay. Can you help Susie and I get you dressed and then you can, okay? She just tries to stay very calm herself, and by her staying calm and not giving a reaction, he starts to calm down. The Carnups often care for rescued Dalmatians until a permanent home becomes available. Susie Q was one such dog. 
After three months, they found her a home, and Susie Q left the Carnups. JD was very upset that Susie left. Susie was with them not even one week, and she did things that she has never, ever done in our home. She was very misbehaved. Uh, she just was not a happy dog. They said she just did everything we feel in her power to get back to us. This was the home she was meant to be in. And if it wouldn't be for her, I don't think he'd be here. I don't think he'd be alive. JD suffers from seizures. They slow his heart rate and reduce the flow of oxygen to his brain, threatening his life. Once, while the family was asleep, he had a close call. She woke me up, and I realized she was in my son's room, laying on top of Jacob, holding his arms and legs down, and he was in the middle of a grand mal seizure. But to get into his room, she had to clear a four and a half foot door. She jumped it, I don't know how she, how she did it. My alarm was set to go off 10 minutes later, and the doctors say chances are he would not have been alive. We don't know if Susie smells something or if she feels something from him that the rest of us aren't able to feel. I can't say what it is, but she's proven that deaf or not, she knows what to do. About 12% of all Dalmatians are born deaf. Because she can't hear, Susie Q compensates in other ways. She relies on her sight, smell, and on vibrations she feels to get her information. We um, use sign language for Susie. We also communicate by her watching our face. She's very good watching emotions. Stop. Good girl. I love you. Good girl. I love you. The Dalmatian is an active, energetic dog that enjoys lots of exercise. They're people-oriented and need to be part of a family. They usually get on well with other dogs and are happy in multi-pet households. Dalmatian puppies are born all white and begin to develop their spots within 10 to 14 days. Susie Q has a special role with other dogs the Carnups foster. She's a nursemaid to the dogs. We call her the queen. She's the queen of the house. When we foster another dog, it's not just Dean and I and the kids fostering it, it's Susie Q. Susie Q is also part of the foster family. Susie's the icebreaker for a lot of dogs when they come here. She is able to let them know that we're trusting, we're not gonna hurt them. And she's helped a lot of them fit into the family. Where's mom's girls? Where's my girls? What about boy? B-O-Y, boy. J.D.'s challenges include autism. He also has learning delays and difficulties with motor skills. J, A, oops. Twice a week, he works with therapist Holly Sprang. J.D.'s respect for Susie is a great motivator for their work. There you go. Dog. How do you spell dog? O G dog. Very good. What's your dog's name? She's such a important thing to him, he would, he was willing to write, where it was a huge struggle before that, just to get him to write one letter, and then he, now he's writing names, and he was so willing just to write her name. It wasn't a struggle at all. Very good. That's a good job. Susie helps at mealtimes, too. When we offer food to JD, if he won't eat it, we offer it to Susie. She is willing to eat food that I really wouldn't say a dog would normally eat. Can we get some more? Susie eats it, JD sees that, and JD feels it's safe. Good job. Yeah. Just saying her name, using her in everyday speech. She doesn't really even always have to be there. Just saying, well, Susie Q, and then he wants to do it. He just has a great respect for her. He understands that if Susie does it, JD can do it. Susie Q has come a long way herself with the help of the Carnups. Susie was a very nervous dog. Susie was very shy. Um, she would jump away from people. We'd rock her, we'd hold her. A lot of, I love you. A lot of praise, a lot of praise, a lot of treats, a lot of looking in her eyes. 
and it took time, but she eventually started coming out of her shell, started accepting people, started accepting signs, and she's where she is today. The Carnups would like Susie Q to be with JD constantly, but first she'd need her assistance dog certification. Unfortunately, most organizations won't certify a deaf dog. A lot of people feel that deaf dogs should be euthanized. They feel they're more violent, um, that they're harder to take care of, that they're a dog that just should not be around. But since I now have Susie, we've raised Susie, I totally disagree. She has proven that she has a place in life and her place in life is to take care of JD. This is Susie's world. Her world is quiet, but yet she can read what JD needs. She knows what my family needs and she's a one in a million. Just a few miles from Hollywood, the Silver Lake area of Los Angeles is home to one of California's most talented musicians. Sven, a ten and a half year old mixed breed, has just released his first CD with his musician owner Steve Brooks. They're off to a local record store to see how their CD is selling. You gotta go promote your CD at Amoeba Records. Yeah, good boy. Steve likes to play Sven's CD in the car. They call themselves Canine Fusion, and their acid jazz rock and roll sound is designed to appeal to both people and dogs. Steve plays drums, while Sven provides the vocals, piano, guitar, and electric bass. They'll be performing tonight at the CD launch. How's the record doing? Oh, it's doing good. Doing good? Glad you came by. Promoting a show tonight at the Echo. Really? So, yeah. He's going to play live? He's going to play live. That's great. Do you see? We have it on let's, display. Yeah, let's check it out. Come on, Sven. Alrighty, here it is. There he is. Sven, you can't see it. It's too tall. I think he's uh, somewhere right behind the, the knack here. Canine Fusion. There's my boy. Most successful dog artist probably in the rock section. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Thanks a lot. All right, man. Good to Thanks. see you. OK. Bye. Just when the media and the music industry are showing interest in canine fusion, time is running out. Sven has a chest tumor and was recently diagnosed with a terminal liver disease. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Get it, get it. He's on $500 a month of medicine just to keep the liver functioning as is. I had uh, six, seven different vets tell me that he'd be lucky if he lives a year. It's sad, but he still looks good. He wakes up like a puppy every day. I'm, I'm grateful every morning when I wake up and see him. Sven spent years on the road with Steve and his band. Eventually, Steve discovered Sven had the music in him, too. In particular, a unique vocal style. This afternoon, they're rehearsing for tonight's launch. The way I did the CD, it was done several different ways, but I recorded his vocals, for instance, because in the morning, I can get him to say real words, and I, when he's growling and he wakes up, he says, I love you, who really loves you, I love the guy. It's, it's hit or miss, but sometimes these real words come out. Did you hear that? <laughs> say I love you. Say I love you. Say I love you. Good boy. Growling is Sven's language. <laughs> Once I had the vocals on tape, then I just added some drum, drums to the vocals. It's all dogs except for the drums. The drums are the only human element. Everything else is dogs. He, uh, he sits on the piano and just pounds on it with his feet, and, um, and he rolls over on it, and I can guide him up and guide him down and conduct him uh, as a conductor, up and down and over, and he'll, he'll even touch certain keys with his nose if I point at the key. He'll get two or three notes in a row if I point at the keys. But he plays with the most enthusiasm with his feet. Sven uses his feet on the guitar uh, the same way he does on the piano, but he'll also use his teeth like Jimi Hendrix. 
that's I just pick the best pieces and I play with the best pieces, but he, he writes the music as, you know, and I, I overall kind of compose it into a, a song. Sven and Steve met 10 years ago when they were both down on their luck. Steve was penniless and alone when he rescued the injured four-month-old Sven. The pup had been thrown out of a moving truck. Sven is my true soulmate. If there ever was such a thing as a soulmate, he's the prime example. And um, it's a bond that has changed my life. I know everybody says this, but he's more human than any dog I've ever seen. He, he really tries to communicate, and uh, he's the reason I do what I do. We hang in there for each other. And I'm going to really miss him one day. The CD launch is at Club Echo on Sunset Boulevard. For Steve, it's bittersweet. He knows that tonight's performance could be Sven's last. is here. A local station is taping the performance for the late night news. The audience includes the producer from Pet Radio and the editor of Bark Magazine. Oh, he's an amazing performer. I mean, he has the nuance, he has, you know, the drive to go ahead and take the chance. Sven was way better than most of the bands that play here, definitely by far. This is really a dog playing music, so it's pretty phenomenal, and he's a darling dog anyway. He has a lot of star quality. Especially like his keyboard work. So I'm very impressed by that. I've heard all the bands in LA. Sven was at the top of the list, definitely top five. I think Sven really enjoyed the show. His tail was wagging. He's got rock and roll in his blood, you know? That's my boy. He's a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> 